Hola. Another topic people seem to find confusing in Spanish are indirect object pronouns. Especially for English speakers, they can be confusing because Spanish often seems backwards when translating into English. So, I came up with a song for you to help you remember what indirect objects are used for as well as the pronouns, in case you need them. You might watch the video where we talk about indirect objects if you haven't yet. And enjoy the song! Feel free to sing along once you get the hang of it. I'll sing it three times to get it stuck into your head. Then we'll take a quick look at some of the few examples after the song to show you how the lyrics are helpful. Oh, and one more thing, it's to the tune of This Old Man. Objects in Espanol, they're used to say to or for someone before the verb or after some. Otra vez, metele no sos les are all indirect objects in Espanol. They're used to say to or for someone before the verb or after some. Una vez más. Métele no sos les are all indirect objects in Espanol. They're used to say to or for someone before the verb or after some. Pretty simple, right? So as the song explains, me te le, nos, os in Spain, and les are all used to say when something is done to or for someone. Now the lyric before the verb, refers to where we usually see the mete, le, nos, les, and os in Spain before the verb. Check out these few examples and how backwards the order is when we compare Spanish to English. Te doy un regalo would translate to, to you I give a gift. Me das un dólar? To me you give a dollar? The last lyric says, or after some. While these can go on the beginning of the verb phrase, they can also be attached to multiple verbs after the infinitive, the ing form, and affirmative commands. Here are some examples with multiple verbs. I could say, te quiero dar un regalo, which putting it before would mean, I want to give you a gift, literally to you I want to give a gift, but notice we have another verb with an r on the end, the infinitive. I can attach the te on the end instead. Quiero darte un regalo. This sounds a lot more like English order. But both are used, and both are understandable. Or, me vas a dar un dólar? Literally, to me, you are going to give a dollar. And I can change this to, vas a darme un dólar? Either are fine, either are understandable and used. Or, with estar and the ing. Remember, that ends in ndo. I might say, Te estoy hablando. To you, I am speaking right now. I can attach this to the NDO form. So, estoy hablando te. I am talking to you. Notice we'll add an accent mark over that vowel. And this is more like the English order. What, to me, are they asking right now? And I could change it and put it on the end again. ¿Qué están preguntándome? What are they asking me? Again. Both of these are used, both of these are understandable. Notice we will we'll put an accent mark over that vowel before the NDO. Or we could attach these to the end of affirmative commands. Some examples. Háblanos. Talk to us. Denme un dólar. Give a dollar to me. Démosle una oportunidad. Let's give a chance to him. Now we're only going to attach these to the end of affirmative commands. If this is a negative command, we're actually going to put it at the beginning of the verb phrase like we usually do. So, hablanos would be no nos hables. 
denme un dólar, no me den un dólar, démosle una oportunidad, no le demos una oportunidad. And that's it for this song. Hopefully it gave you a better idea of what indirect objects are and how they're used generally in Spanish. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on new Spanish video lessons. If you liked this song and found it helpful, please like the video. And you might check out any related videos for more information. Gracias por mirar. Y nos vemos.